just to type in chat. This meeting is being recorded. <laughs> Take a minute to type in chat where, where you're calling from, um, particularly what city and what organization you're calling from, just to build a sense of, of energy and, and excitement as, as people are signing in. Um, did the music go away, Russ? Can we make a comeback or, or should we? Uh, okay. You're unmuted, so you can you can just tell me. There we go. There we go. It was nice. It was okay. Cool. So uh, take same. Take a chance to just write into chat where you're calling from, um, and then what organization you're calling from, just to get a sense of everybody where uh, where they're joining us from. Um, we'll have some more questions in a moment about uh, what your motivation and interest is. Um, for those of you who have come to previous Enact events, this is a collaborative event, so slightly different to set up. Um, and as those um, are coming in, thanks, it's nice to see people coming from a little bit of everywhere. Um, welcome UK youth, I've seen you in some other Enact sessions. Welcome Abby. Um, nice to see some, some friendly faces that I haven't seen in a while. Um, and as those are coming in, again, people that have just signed in. Okay, uh, people that have just signed in, we're just uh, asking people to just very simply write in chat where, where they're calling from, what organization. We'll have more questions for you to get a bit deeper in, in a moment. And meanwhile, I think as, as you're doing that, I'm just going to do a very quick, because I don't want to take up too much time because there's a lot of an amazing people that are, that are sharing with us today. Um, so I just want to do a very quick two minute introduction into what Enact is, what the, this, this festival that this event is embedded in is. Um, so thanks, thanks Russ for sharing that starting screen. Enact is, is a festival that um, we're, we're in our last week. We've been doing this all of May, run by InHive, but supported by all of these other great organizations that work with and support networks and communities. And, and it's essentially a space for us to say, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a festival all about networks. And it's a place for us to say, networks are something that are all around us. Networks are something that we're all in, we're all familiar with, and yet the conversations about how networks can achieve real transformational impact or even how central they are to achieving impact is happening very little. Um, and, and so we wanted to create a space that's for network leaders and coordinators, um, for, for funders, for community builders, for activists, to, to just get a sense of of what networks are, um, what, what kind of stories are out there around networks, have some conversations and do some practice um, techniques. Because I think one of the cool things that in, in us setting up all of these, these different sessions over the month is that all of these different organizations run, run networks. And this is only a sampling of all the different organizations that are out there. And yet there's stories about how they're using, leveraging networks for everything from uh, gender equity to well-being to sustainable agriculture to conflict and crisis or education are just not being told enough um, despite how powerful their, their, their models and approaches are. So we've been having network stories, uh, network dialogues, and also these different spaces for people to come together and if they run networks or communities or, um, or trying to figure out how to do it, to come together and to figure out how to or everything from set up a network platform or engage in self-organizing. So there's a lot more of a NAT that, that is happening across um, the rest of this week. We encourage you to check it out. My colleague Yusuf will be sharing some more about it in, in chat. Um, and but in the meantime, I just I'll hand it back over to Russ, who will kick off this session, which I think will be. I mean, I think if if I can do a bit of a of an unscripted introduction, um, I know that this the work that um, co-creative and signal and all the partners um, and illuminate have been doing to kind of figure out how how systems change can 
can really be conceptualized differently. And pe the people that are on the ground, what their real needs are, a lot of that, I, we've been having a lot of conversations about how that is rooted in kind of uh, um, a principles and, and way of thinking that are about collaboration and, um, and networks. And so I'm really excited to, to have us all dive into that uh, with some really amazing people today. So thanks for the time to give the intro and over to you, Russ. Thank you, Brendan. I'm Russ Gaskin with Co-Creative. I'm gonna invite you to join me in marking a threshold as we enter this space together. We're gonna to share a bit about some of uh, the hopes of the team that pulled this session together. And I think you'll see there are some um, aspirations of safety and even joy and um, lots of expressions of just beautiful humanity. So wherever you are in your day, maybe you're early in your morning or you're late in your evening, um, you might be carrying things. And uh, this is an invitation to pause and reflect and make a choice about what we want to bring into this space. So let's mark a threshold to enter our learning space together and to deepen our awareness of self, others, and our planet. I invite you to sit up and relax into your seat. Settle in, breathe in and out. Become aware of your breath. Notice how you're feeling right now. Any sensations in your body? Any thoughts in your mind? And notice what, if anything, you're carrying with you into this space today. Cultivate this awareness of yourself. You may wanna make a choice about what to set aside at the threshold and what to bring forward with you into our space together. As you have a sense of how you're doing, expand that sense inside and out and notice the environment around you, the air on your face, the sounds, the smells, the ground or floor you're sitting or standing on and get a sense of your connection with the planet that is sustaining us and all the systems that we're a part of. Sense that connection to the earth. And with that awareness of our relationship with the earth, bring your awareness to this workshop, this group, here and now. Sense the people here with you. Expand your awareness to them and consider how they might be doing. This is awareness of our community. Once you have a sense of your connection with our group, take a relaxing breath in and out. And with this awareness of yourself, others, and our planet, let's move into the space together to deepen our thinking and learning together about funding systems change. Thank you. Ife, I think we're over to you. Thank you so much, Ross. Hmm, I feel energized. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to this session and this conversation on um, how funders can better support and fund systemic change in ways that are more equitable and more effective. I welcome you to this session. Thank you so much for joining. Um, please be aware that this session is being recorded. Um, the recording slides, um, the recording and the slides will be made available after this session. 
um, for the time that we will spend together. Please keep your microphone muted um, until, of course, prompted otherwise. Um, this is a highly interactive session. So we encourage you to at least turn on your cameras um, so that we can see the faces behind uh, the cameras. And then if for any reason you need technical support, please, um, you can private chat Yusra, who is on the call. We welcome you to keep an open mind um, throughout. If you have um, some questions, you could put in the chat or else um, we will have Slido links um, that we will use to get some comments and some thoughts as we go through with today's session. So I welcome you again. Thank you for joining us. Um, the flow for today's session is, of course, the welcome and introductions. And then we will have uh, the signal report, some highlights and an introduction to the report. Um, then we'll have the discussion session where we'll be exploring implications. And then um, we will have session a, a, a session for um, the possibility for deeper learning. And then we will close out and um, discuss next steps. Next. So we have some, um, the speakers we have today uh, just give me a minute. Um, we have several speakers today for this session. I'm just going to give a brief uh, introduction of the speakers and we will have the links uh, to, their, to their profiles so you can take a look afterwards and then uh, read up on, on them. Of course, you have me, my humble self. I'm Ifeinwa Egwauji, a lead fellowship for Ashoka Africa. Um, we have Lorena Garcia Duran, who is the diversity, equity, and inclusion leader for Ashoka Global. We have Mary Tangelda, who is the impact capacity development head for MasterCard Foundation. We have Louis Tapia, who is the network jeweler, Illuminate Systems Change Network. We have Ross Hall, he's a co-lead learning societies for Jacobs Foundation. We have Ross Gaskin, who is the managing director for Co-Creative. Karima Grant, the founder and director Imagination Africa. And Melissa Gavin, who is the chief executive officer of Reham. Next. So um, we, we would look at the intentions uh, for today. What are our intentions? When, while we were preparing for this session, we asked the speakers for their intentions and the intentions that came up for us are joy, connection, inquisitiveness, space for authenticity, open sharing, responsibility, we are looking at a space where people can be challenged around how they are showing up and using their money, as well as a safe space to share barriers, preventing funders from equitable grants making. Now I am um, coming back to you and I'm asking, what are your intentions for today? Would like to learn more about what brings you all here, you know, Please, uh, Ross, please, can you share the Slido link? Yep, I just shared it in chat. Okay, um, so we have the Slido link on the chat. Please uh, go to Slido and then enter uh, the code signal and share with us what brought you here today. As you join this session, what role is most present for you? Are you a systems leader, funder, consultant? You know, whatever role is most present for you today, please share with us on Slido. And then also share one value 
that consistently informs your life and your work. If the, the Slido link doesn't work, please, please feel free to share on the chat so that we can get your intentions as well. So we'll just give a couple of minutes, about two to three minutes so we can enter um, our intentions on Slido and then we can continue. Please keep them coming. We have about, uh, I think we have about, okay, 30, about 30 something responses now. So please keep them coming. If for any reason you can't, uh, you can't put your thoughts on Slido, just put them on the chat. Ross, I see you're trying to share the, the thoughts. You're on mute. Let me try it again. Okay, please do. Thank you. So let's just give Ross a few about a few minutes to share. Um, uh, okay, thank you. So we can see some of the thoughts uh, that are showing up for us um, this morning, afternoon, depending on where you're calling from. Curiosity is the main one we have here today. And then learning is uh, the other one. We have inspiration and learning, networks, um, someone is interested to learn, systems change funder, opportunity to learn, sustainability, super keen to hear um, the speakers, um, ripples of impact, you know, stay up to date, and then topic is relevant to my work. Those are some of the, the intentions that are showing up for us um, today in this session. What role is the most present for you as you join the session today? We have systems leader, um, systems change for frontline change agents and leaders, co-leader bioregional living labs, 
uh, resistance change at micro, oh, I didn't say that, founder of women's led networks with ambitions to tackle root causes of gendered poverty in the UK. Thank you so much um, for, for sharing the, the role that is most present for you. Um, we have a lot of, a lot of uh, partners, um, a lot of friends in this. And then share one value that consistently informs your work and your life, collaboration, trust-based relationships. We have humility, authenticity, compassion, equity, justice, integrity. These are some of the um, values that informs our Looks like Ife might uh, have connection issues. So um, I'll just leave this up for a bit and then we're gonna transition to Luis to share about Illuminate. Luis, go ahead. <laughs> Ife, you on front? Yes. What's up, y'all? My name is Luis Alejandro Tapia. Um, some of my friends call me Lou. Uh, I'm a fat black man with ox beard, gap tooth, zooming in from the land of the Lenape, uh, Lenape Hoki, New York City. Uh, and I am a commitment to transforming leadership and learning into spaces of justice, equity, and freedom. I also serve as the network doula for Luminate. Uh, this and all of my work happens at the intersections of spirituality, justice, healing, and liberation. Um, so signal, right? Um, support, inspire, gather, network, learn, right? Um, the reason why we're here, uh, and, and you might consider it, or I consider it, kind of our, our manifesto or our, our, party, our party platform, um, is an international research project helping funders and field builders deeply understand the practice of systems change and the needs of system leaders. And so the purpose is in the name. The purpose is to foster support, inspiration, gathering, networking, and learning for the field. And so I'd love to share a little bit about Eliminate, if that's okay, okay with you. take a moment to honor some of the faces that might be familiar to you, might not be, they might, new, might be new faces to you. And so Illuminate is a collaborative network committed to cultivating the field and practice of systems change towards a just, equitable, and regenerative future for all. It's a collaboration of funders, consultants, other groups that are growing the field of systems change around issues of equity and justice and connecting people who are working on these issues with systems change resources and learning opportunity. So our intention is to develop and integrate equity practice and principles as a foundation of the field building network. And we do this to support the field's capacity to work from an equity lens, to decenter dominant systems and to engage communities who are seeking equity and justice. Specifically, we're, cur we're curating equity systems change practices, exchanging and sharing tools and resources developing a series of exchanges in collaboration with leading practitioners to advance the practice of equity and systems change and share insights with the broader field. We're creating peer learning programs for system leaders working from marginalized communities and system leaders embedded in mainstream institutions, bridging to more marginalized communities. We're convening systems change field builders to gather learning and insight into decolonizing practices. And we're curating network outreach, strengthening the ecosystem of systems change field builders engaging new partners beyond the usual suspects, diversifying network participants and integrating learning. Um, and more importantly, we're doing this um, in joyous ways, in beautiful ways, um, in ways that remind us of community and why we're looking to create the change that we want to create. I'll pass it back to Russ and Ife. Thank you, Louis. Um, I 
pass it on to Ross um, to share about uh, the signal survey. Thanks, Ife. Ife and I are going to share it together. I'm going to start out. Um, we want to share a bit of the highlights from the signal research. You all uh, should have received the report after your registration for this session. And if you didn't, you'll receive it right after the session as well. But um, the uh, I'm going to share a bit about Signal. I'm going to share along with Ife. Ife is going to share most of the kind of insights related to funding and resourcing systems change work. And then we're going to invite you all in breakout discussions to, to talk about what does this mean for you? What do you think about what you heard, um, uh, what comes up for you when you consider what you heard. So uh, Signal's research intent, um, as, as Louisa noted, alluded to, was to understand both the common and differenti differentiated needs, interests, language, aspirations, and I would add, and experiences, on the ground experiences of people doing systems change work. They may not call themselves leaders. They may them call themselves like Luis did, a doula, or um, they may have different names for it. But we were looking for people who are in this kind of catalytic role in systems change work, and they were connecting other actors across a system to support systemic change so that that system will produce systematically better results and more equitable results. We had uh, a reason for doing this other than we all, we all were interested in hearing those voices more clearly, and that is um, to build a learning ecosystem. And so, as Luis noted, Illuminate is, is working on different solutions around that. Other folks uh, like um, Brendan and his team at InHive are, uh, we are in fact experiencing the learning system ecosystem that they've been fostering around the Enact Festival. So many beautiful things emerging here, and we just want it to go deeper, bigger, faster in terms of really supporting the systems change efforts that are happening around the world. So just noting some of the partners for this report, these are not the only partners for this for the Signal project overall, but this initial report we focused on the experiences of system leaders in North America and Africa, and these are the partners who uh, supported that work. This is a bit about the folks we spoke with during this inquiry. There were 40 interviews with system leaders working on all kinds of different challenges and issues. You'll note at the bottom there, about two thirds of the folks we spoke with identified as female. Um, that's consistent with a lot of what we've seen in this field, a lot of um, female and, and feminine leadership in systems change roles uh, around the world. And it was reflected in North America and Africa as well. And these were the seven key themes that emerged. And we centered equity and inclusion, not just uh, graphically here, but it was literally centered as really the core issue, the core kind of challenge and interest of the system leaders we spoke with. And that was common across both continents, that the need for really centering equity, really um, centering proximate leaders in the work, not just their experiences and their voices, but their, their leadership and their knowledge of, of the of the context in which any work is being done. We also had um, expanding capabilities and increasing capacity. So increasing capacity was more about, we need uh, more diverse skills. We need more team capacity to support the work that's happening. And expanding capabilities was, uh, I think a pretty universal thing, maybe not totally universal among the 40 interviewees, but man, this work is hard and it is a lifelong learning journey. And um, one person said, I will never stop learning about how to lead systems change work more, more effectively. So we're gonna focus in here on particularly resourcing systems change and centering equity and inclusion, which has a lot of uh, connections into how resourcing is done or not done currently. 
And you'll see in the report other areas too, leveraging indigenous wisdom came up across both continents, some different kind of expressions based on who was speaking and their cultural and ethnic context. Um, and then uh, we had the need to support leaders, this, this really craving desire for connection, for support, to be in relationship with others who are taking on the difficult work of holding the space in between efforts and organizations and sectors. Um, and we heard it can be a lonely place to be. So we're looking at ways that we can support. And I know others are working on ways to support that connection and relationship for folks. And then deepening collaboration, clearly a theme that's uh, very relevant to the ENACT Festival and the theme of networks. So a few things in centering equity and inclusion. One was addressing bias in the systems change field itself. And you saw, um, uh, as Luis introduced Illuminate, um, the, the focus on diversity and equity and uh, the essentially decolonizing the field of systems change. And we heard that from leaders, um, again, in both continents, the theme was very consistent. Uh, there are ways of working, ways of thinking, ways of doing things, et cetera, that, um, that don't really honor uh, indigenous wisdom, that don't honor local wisdom, uh, and in fact, are barriers to the work. So um, things like, you know, working sequentially and uh, reductionist, using reductionist analytics and mindsets and, um, uh, you know, having positional leaders uh, make the decisions as opposed to a diverse representation of the people in the community or in the system. And then recognizing risks from race, racism that racism is overt and happening in the field of systems change, just as in uh, other systems that we, that we know. Ife. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. <laughs> um, I had issues with uh, my internet. Thank you, Ross. Um, the systems leaders we spoke with um, talked about diversifying systems leadership. Um, they talked about um, white dominance in, in, uh, in their initiatives uh, that in spite of, of equity in their systems change uh, initiatives, many leaders spoke you know, about white uh, dominance in participating organizations. So um, even social innovation most often comes from the white middle class and, most, and often um, they are male. One leader observed that the world of social innovation is predominantly white and the native serving organizations, you know, in the region also have um, um, availability of strong leaders, but, you know, the leadership uh, basically oftentimes is, is white. Next slide, please. Um, and then they talked about engaging equitably with communities in listening deeply and building relationships, you know, engaging with humility, listening deeply, learning from the communities, and then taking time to build relationships, you know, beyond the immediate need or beyond the immediate project uh, at the core, you know, of the practices that the leaders we spoke with uh, talked about. The, um, advocated for centering community voices, um, looking at the voices in the community, centering their voices, the voices of the communities in systems work. Um, they described uh, that there are powerful benefits, you know, of centering the voices of the communities in, in the work that they do. And then um, they, they talked about moving away from outside experts, that there are you know, indigenous expertise and, you know, this indigenous expertise needs to be um, trusted. They are frustrated with, you know, expert driven analysis you know, rather than looking at the experiences of community members, you know, and uh, what this can do for system change work. 
And then um, systems leaders also talked about moving into co-creation. You know, um, they, they embraced co-creative processes in, in their communities and then um, working with them as allies, you know, looking at uh, their vision, analysis and strategies for change. Um, one system leader said, we can't arrive and impose a vision, you know, on, on systems leaders. We can't arrive with an attitude such as I have to come to conquer. Rather, it's best to have, you know, um, co-creative processes with, with the systems leaders. Next, please. Hello. I changed the slide if they are you seeing it. Okay, thank you. Um, and then uh, they talked about advancing equity in funding and philanthropy. Um, and they talked about funders engaging with communities. Systems leaders described how funders, you know, show up. They need to show up more equitably and also um, figure out how to design inclusive ways that community members could, you know, work with them uh, equitably rather than uh, uh, prescribing. Oftentimes, funders, you know, sort of prescribe as against, you know, coming to the table to work with the systems leaders. Then they also talked about addressing racial bias in, in philanthropy. Um, they shared concerns about racial bias in the uh, field of philanthropy and um, uh, noted that minority organizations do not get as much uh, uh, preferences as you know, a white organization would get if it comes to funding um, and, and uh, funding on a minority platform. Next slide. Okay, um, leaders across Africa and North America told us about the challenges they face in the resourcing systems change um, in their initiatives and that they desire to see the funding approaches evolve as against what has been happening you know, over time. Next slide, um, advancing equity in, in funding and philanthropy, the shared concerns about reliable funding you know, how right now it's unreliable, how and, and uncertain, you know, they would prefer to have a more reliable and equitable funding um, in philanthropy. Long term, supporting long term strategies, systems change takes time and it's, uh, it will profit systems change work, you know, for, for systems leaders to work on long term strategies um, as a result of the fact that right now, they are frustrated with some of the funding commitments because they are, they are short term. They talked about investing in systemic and emergent um, approaches. Um, they looked at how the emergence and iterative processes you know, are key when you're working uh, through these complex issues. And so it's better to invest uh, in, in systemic and emergent uh, approaches growing appetites for experimentation. Systems change is not um, done in a linear form. It's, it's actually highly unpredictable. And so it requires experimentation and learning and uh, funders need to trust systems leaders and you know, provide flexible funding that will enable systems leaders to experiment and uh, to work on, on their systems initiatives for a longer period of time. Next slide. Um, they shared about advancing collaboration among funders. So uh, systems leaders are frustrated, you know, with getting funders to align on approaches and, and strategies. This limits the reach and also limits the effectiveness of their work. Um, ensuring funding access for marginalized communities. There are communities um, that are not reached with funding. So this of course brings frustration in the systems change work in, in um, both Africa and North America. And so it would be helpful if, uh, if um, the funding um, can be accessed by marginalized communities. 
expanding responsive governmental uh, funding. Systems leaders also look at, uh, talked about government funding for their work and the challenges that um, this has put them through. And then they also shared the issue about um, evolving measurement and evaluation in language, in metrics, timeframes, systems leaders are, you know, at this point frustrated with um, the measurement and evaluation processes that exist currently and would prefer if we have, you know, it evolve um, to reflect what is actually happening on ground. We know that measurement and evaluation these days looks at timeframes, it looks at um, numbers as against uh, paradigm shifts, mindset shifts, you know, and some, some shifts in the system. So the evolution of this practice would be highly helpful for systems change work. Next slide. And finally, I invite Ross uh, for us to share some proverbs um, on systems change. So I'll share, I'll just pick a few and share, and then I'll invite uh, Ross to do the same. Um, when there's peace in a country, the chief does not carry a shield. This is a Ugandan proverb, a proverb on outcomes um, as regards systems change. Cross the river in a crowd and the crocodile won't eat you. This is another African proverb on oneness. And then on learning, uh, which is another African proverb, we have, do not look where you fell, look where you slipped. So I invite uh, Ross to also share some African proverbs on systems change. Thanks, Ife. Uh, and I want to note uh, appreciation to Peace and Ganwa, who, uh, when she was at MasterCard Foundation, learning about systems change, pulled this set of uh, of um, proverbs together. Um, the one that stands out to me is wisdom is like a baobab tree. No one individual can embrace it. So those are in the report. We'll leave you with, with those. And I want to move us into some discussion now. Uh, we're gonna invite you into a breakout group discussion, four or five people. This will be random groups. And um, we have a few prompts for you very quickly, kind of just your name, how you are now. Um, what do you think about what you heard? So, you know, maybe something stood out to you as particularly interesting or challenging or whatever that is. Uh, and if any feelings are coming up for you related to that, um, those are important, right? Because they're information uh, and um, our, it's our body telling us that maybe there's something pushing us or something maybe challenging us or inviting us uh, into some new learning. So I wanna check with uh, Maricela. I think we have 15 minutes for these groups. Is that correct? Just wanna check that assumption. Yes, it is correct. Thanks, Russ. Okay. So um, we'll put these uh, into the chat if we haven't already, looks like they're there and uh, invite you to join your group. And um, Let's just keep confidentiality with one another. So we'll have a, a rule of confidence here that you're free to share what you heard, but not to attribute it to the speaker or the speaker's organization. So we can create a little bit of boundary around our space for sharing here. Ife, anything before we go into breakouts? No, I think you covered it. Thanks, okay. Russ. We'll see you all in 15 minutes. Okay.
Are we coming back any second? Thank you. Just a few more seconds while folks come back in. Welcome back. Are we all here? Welcome back, everybody. Um, Are we all back? So for us to look at, uh, yes, I think so. Perfect. All right, well, let's do this. Um, thank you, thank you for, for coming back to us. Uh, if you don't mind just checking again that you are on mute, um, checking your names, make sure that we can see you and hope you definitely enjoyed that conversation. We're gonna open up for another conversation. Um, we're gonna hear around 10 minutes um, to some of our speakers and then we'll open up the microphone and engage in some Q and A for another 15 minutes, if you don't mind. Um, so while, while I start just introducing, reintroducing again our speakers, Ross, if you would be kind enough to share um, the Slido on the screen and we will just read a little bit of reactions. In the meantime though, um, let me just reintroduce the four uh, speakers that we're going to listen to. And Lorena, uh, I think we have not to interrupt. I think we'll do Slido. We're going to call for Slido feedback and then share. Okay, perfect. And we have the link, correct? Yes. Dropping that in now. Beautiful. Thank you, Ross. So yeah, as, as the folks start to chat in their small panel, we invite you to share any reflection in Slido. You'll see what other people contribute and you can also vote for things that resonate with you, which is really helpful to Lorena and the panel because they'll be able to see kind of what's coming up, not just for individuals, but for the group. Thank you for that, Ross. So make sure that you go to that link, share your reactions, your reflections from that conversation. Let's give it a couple of minutes. And Ross, if you don't mind, as soon as you start seeing enough responses, um, share your screen. All right. So why don't we start while you're doing that Slido exercise? Um, again, let me reintroduce the four wonderful speakers that we're gonna listen um, from. And um, I have with me Karima Grant, founder and director of Imagination Africa. Um, uh, we also have Melissa Gavin, uh, Chief Executive Office, Officer for REAMP, uh, Ross Hall, Co-Lead Learning Societies from Jacobs Foundation, and Mary Tangelder, Impact Capacity Development Head for the MasterCard Foundation. And soon we will have the five of us on our screen. There we go. Beautiful. We're just waiting for a couple more. Go ahead and start, Lorena. I'm just looking for our other panelists here. Perfect, thank you. So welcome, welcome Karima, welcome Mary, Ross and um, Melissa. We're gonna just try to have a conversation um, mainly between the four of you. I'll just throw in some 
ideas on the table. And, um, and what was very interesting, I also want our audience to, to think about is that even though Mary and Ross come here representing uh, almost the, the funder side of, of this um, relationship and Melissa and Karima are sort of the, the, the system changers um, that are all the time having to deal with, with funding and funders. Um, to have that into, in, into your mindset, but also think that in many times, a funder or a person that is inside of a foundation, it's also a person. And of course, they're trying to follow, you know, the, the, the paradigms of the foundation that they're part of, or that they have founded. But, you know, as a, as a human being, they also experience a lot of um, the dichotomies and the challenges of if I, if I could, I would, you know, I would do this or I would do that, but you have to follow sometimes, um, you know, the policies or the big goals of a foundation. So with that, I would love for to open the microphone and just allow you to have a conversation, but I'm going to kick you off with some some ideas to start the conversation if someone is brave enough to just unmute yourself. Um, I'll start with this. In your experience in funding practices of systems change, and also in terms of Karima and Melissa, in your experience of receiving funding, can you share some of the stories um, that have given you the best opportunity to learn? Some of those stories that have really helped you, um, you know, question probably the biases that you might have had and 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 learn from from that experience. Who wants to kick us off? I can, I, hi everybody, Melissa Gavin, great to be with you. I'm happy to get us started just to, just to start the conversation. And I wanted to respond to this question of what is your experience in the funding practices of systems change work? And, and one thing that I am learning is that systems change work, systems, um, the, the term systems change is incredibly sexy and attractive right now. And it looks really different on the ground than I think a lot of philanthropy thinks it should or does. And so when um, I, I hear the word a lot from funders that they want to fund systems change, they want to they want to address root causes, but they also want it done in a year and they want some metrics. They want you to report on metrics that you're not going to you're it's there's just a complete mismatch and I'm learning that I have to be careful and break down with them what is the, what does systems change look like for you and for me it looks like on a very granular level it looks like a lot of meetings it looks like a lot of people coming together with sticky notes and big flip chart paper and it's not as sexy as it sounds and and then I'm learning that I I may need to talk to funders in different ways to help them understand that when they think systems change and I think systems change, we may not be thinking about what it looks like on a granular level the same way. Karina, what would you what would you say? Yeah, uh, thank you for that. I'm, I'm glad I become sexy because I think about three, four years ago it wasn't sexy and it wasn't even um, in the language. So I think that's something also for us to remark upon about how funding goes through sort of sexy language and sexy jargon and we all align ourselves, those of us on the ground, we all align ourselves with it to kind of see how the work we've been doing for so long can now be described by something that funders are now um, very interested in. I think the thing I would add, I would absolutely agree with you, Melissa. I think the other thing that I would add is that I don't think um, in my experiences, funders not only, I mean, yeah, funders, not only do they not understand what it looks like, but they don't understand what it costs. And the assumptions about what it costs to do that kind of work, um, we're not even going to talk about the length of how change happens, but also the risk that they want to take on, okay, yeah, you know, I'm interested in funding systems work, but I'm only interested at this level. And 
for organizations to take that on, that means usually that the head of the organization is going to have to make some really tough decisions. Um, and those decisions usually translate on the ground to who is going to be working with us, the competencies and the experience of the people who are going to be working with us, um, the, the standard of living of the people who are going to be working with us, like what they're going to be able to afford versus what other people are going to be able to afford. Um, and I think all of those things are sort of, you know, when we talk about systems, we talk about sort of the secondary effect of systems. And I think one of the um, sort of the silent implications of how we talk about systems and how we talk about systems change, what we don't talk about, is just all the things that inform systems and all the things that impact uh, organizations, um, particularly organizations I know in Africa, is that it's always this question of just like the amount of money that people have are rarely enough money for people to live. And so you're asking people to really create the risk in their lives that funders um, are not willing to take on. So again, it becomes, you know, sort of, I think it feeds into, um, we talked about it, I think earlier, and I, I'm, I'm really excited about this kind of conversation because I think it, it, it really is the impact. I think the, the, the wonderful quote, um, was do not look where you fall, look where you slipped. And the slip up is what I think a lot of us are, are cleaning up the systems work, but the price, the slip, the impact of the slip, where all, you know, everybody else is slipping um, and what has actually caused the slip is not where I think funders are really looking to invest their money on. You know, they're really looking to invest their money on is, okay, where's the fall? You know, how many young people can we get through school as opposed to what is it really going to take to an organization to really engage a government that doesn't have, um, that has a very terrible history with really engaging civil society organizations? How are we really going to say, okay, in a landscape, we're not going to fund the Save the Children's, we're not going to fund the Oxfam's, we're not going to fund these people, we're going to fund other people. How do we even look at our practices and say, what's the impact of funding the Oxfam's, the Save the Children? on this landscape? How does that create more opportunities for people to slip up as opposed to really looking at systems change? So yeah. thank you, Melissa, for opening the door um, because I think it's, it's, it's such a huge, hairy, um, I don't want to feign beasts, <laughs> but I think it's a huge, ugly beast. And, and it's, it's very, very hard to have the conversations. I mean, um, just as a final anecdote, um, a wonderful organization was really excited to talk about it, really, you know, talk about it. But the conversations themselves were so, um, you know, when, I, when, when you talk around to different organizations, I mean, the conversations themselves are so humiliating sometimes, you know, because the power shift is really there because you're there and it's not so much you know, a question of, okay, you're pitching something, but it's, it, it's sometimes you're talking about you know, what is livelihoods like? What are the livelihoods of people who are working in an organization who are committed to systems change? What are the livelihoods of the community members that are engaging for systems change? Um, and to really have conversations or say, you know, oh, no, 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 but this exists already, you know, and, and it to be so theoretic, sometimes it becomes very, very, um, it can be very humiliating. And I think one of the, the long-term impacts of it that we're also going to talk, the other slip that's happening is, is what's the mental strain uh, on people who are doing this work, because there's a tremendous mental strain, because just going into these kind of conversations, um, you know, are just very up there. So I'll stop you, there. But thank you, you Melissa, for opening so the door. You have given us so much, Karima. I see, Mary, that you have unmuted yourself. Do you want to share? Sure. I guess my first thought as Karima, as you were speaking, I felt like, have you been sitting in my team meetings? It felt very haunting, some of the questions that, and uh, things that you're, you're sharing. And my second thought was, is it too late to back out of this panel? Um, because as a funder, I, I feel um, 
I think many of us internally really feel acutely that, you know, we know there are significant changes that need to happen. And I think, you know, proud of some of the changes we have made, you know, at MasterCard in terms of, you know, new funding mechanisms and, you know, um, shifting operations to Africa, et cetera. However, as you pull a thread or as you start to peel things back, you begin to see just how much more work is needed in terms of decolonizing philanthropy and, and really taking a hard look at what are the, how, how does each or each part of the organization really need to go through a transformation that this isn't just about programs or just about you know different grants but it's actually about incentives it's about our legal frameworks it's about our you know how we um, disperse you know money etc so many many hard conversations and you know I think you know you asked the question about I guess two things stand out around this piece around the language of systems change. And I've been with the foundation for five years and noticed it was about two years ago that when suddenly everybody was using the word. And I think there was an understanding that, oh, we're doing this. Not quite sure what that means yet. And there's, a, there's an opportunity, I think, just to constantly bring home the message that look, people who are at the receiving end of you know, the, the, the blunt force of a system understand it deeply. And our, our task is actually really just to talk to those people and they can explain, you know, young people or people living in deep poverty can explain systems change really well. So, you know, can we invest in, in you know, really helping to bring those stories out to animate what systems change is versus, you know, fronting these conversations with the academic speak around it, you know, which, which begins to privilege that way of knowing. I think another piece here was around time. And, you know, I hear a lot about how much time is needed for relationship building and collaboration, et cetera. And we can see internally, like, while we have a big commitment to, you know, um, co-creative and collaborative approaches, you know, because of the, the, the constraints that we have, these kind of things tend to get truncated or, or you know, we, we don't spend as much time as we want to. And I think part of that is the assumption that one, learning just happens and collaborations just happens. It's just kind of something that you do. It doesn't actually really require planning and resourcing and, and investment. Um, but I think if we can start to show, here's actually how we lose a whole bunch of time down the road because we have to double back or because we've been really inefficient and really start to, I think, talk about time a bit differently because we, we are losing a huge amount of time and, and wastage by not investing on the front end. So I think there's a, there's a harder conversation to, to have around that. And then secondly, I feel like this is also part of, or thirdly, fourthly, whatever, part of decolonizing aid is the sense that, you know, we, we, we've been funding activities and outputs and things that you can count for a really long time and not actually seeing that relationships, a change in relationships is part of changing a system. You know, so how can we, you know, I think a task for funders is to make that change much more vivid. Um, and I'll stop there. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary, also, um, not only for being so so open and vulnerable um, and sharing a lot of, you know, the realities is that there's a lot of challenges still, even with good intentions and, and with good foundations thinking about this. Ross, I want to give you the microphone before we open up for our Q&A. Sure, thanks so much. And uh, I mean, this is clearly, um, a very or it needs to be a nuanced conversation because this is a really complex subject isn't it and i've spent most of my latter career on uh, the fundee side of recently uh, moved over to the funder side of things so while i would agree with you karima that lots of funders i think don't really really understand what this kind of grounded system change work means. I think likewise, lots of fundees don't really understand what it means to be a funder. And I'm, by the way, I'm not claiming, you know, I'm not saying woe is me or I'm a victim here, but there are challenges, of course, on both sides of the table, of course there are. And I've just made a few notes. I've noted three things which I think are realities and three implications that come to my mind when I think of these realities. On the one hand, first of all, there is just an uncomfortable power dynamic. As soon as one person's got money and the other person doesn't but wants it, there's a very difficult power dynamic. And I think that's often not really brought into the, to put clearly on the table when conversations are happening. It's kind of there under the covers and because it's there under the covers, it seems to fester, I think, and it's not very healthy. I would like to see it come out more often. 
Another reality is, of course, everyone really does want to create impact. Um, now, how we conceive of impact might be different, but I think we can trust that there are good intentions on each side, but perhaps uh, if we go, if we explore beyond and the pure intentions to get into the practicalities of how we might start to uncover different perspectives on how that impact might come about. And the third reality, I think, which has really come into my mind is that as a funder, um, you need to make really difficult choices, uh, typically, uh, uh, insofar as you're often getting lots of people asking for what is, what is a limited amount of money. So you have to justify um, the choices that you're making usually to some kind of board or funding committee um, who are even further away by the way from the uh, grounded solution or the grounded problem often um, and so this also calls into play this also difficult assessment of the risk because as the funder you need to make sure that you are making the best investment that you possibly can in order to create the best impact that you possibly can, often with limited understanding. So I think the implications for me is that I completely agree that funders must, must listen to people who are trying to get funding. But I would also say that needs to go the other way. And there needs to be a dialogue, a very deep empathic dialogue which is often missing in my experience. We're certainly trying to do it at the Jacobs Foundation. We, I'm sure we're not always successful, but I just feel this is really critical. And through this dialogue, which requires empathic, deep listening, but also authentic, clear talking and explanation, through that you can build, I think, mutual understanding and mutual trust, which is critical. So that, for me, that's the first implication. The second implication is that I hear a lot and I've been uh, very frustrated in the past about demands made in terms of measurement and uh, progress tracking. But this is critical from the funders side of things. You need to have a sense of how things are going. Um, why do we why should we believe this is working or could work? How can we iterate this so that we can make sure that things are actually working now that the quality and nature of that uh, measurement certainly needs to be looked at and I think certain requirements are simply impractical and undesirable but surely there are ways of monitoring our progress qualitatively and quantitatively uh, that help us all together iterate and improve together and on that last point and then I'll shut up is that I think the third implication to come back to your question Lorena is around learning because this monitoring activity I think needs to inform a robust learning process through which we are um, patiently iterating and improving together in partnership. Thank you so much, Ross. I'm, I'm going to take some of the questions um, that we're getting for, from the audience. There's a very interesting one that I think kind of alludes to the measuring. Um, so please feel, feel free to, to respond. Um, but what does power shift uh, looks like to community members in practice? Like, how do you know if I'm a funder um, and maybe Karima, Melissa, um, you might want to illuminate us on this, but how does it actually know if power shift is happening and how does that look like to the community? How do you know if it's happening? I think the first thing is you have to be able to identify what power is shifting from what to what, because I think the conversation about power is also very nuanced, you know, and so there are many different, it's, it's not, you know, systems are interconnecting, so it's not just we're shifting power from one source to there, right, it's, it's, it's very nuanced. One of the things that I think is very interesting is that, um, is really hearing from who quote unquote, the beneficiaries are, the, the people you're co-creating with, to ask them specifically, if there is going to be a shift, what would it look like if things have shifted? And very often they can tell you what they're looking for. And those can be the things that you're working toward as outcomes. One of the things we've done with many communities is to be able to stop and say, okay, what's that midpoint 
right? What is it going to be? Because that might be a very far away, long way goal that's going to need a whole lot of partners, a whole lot of meetings, a whole lot of um, people coming in. But, you know, what is one step toward that? And I think those are the places where you can get indicators and measurements and be able to talk to people about it. I think um, one of the best experiences we've had um, with funders really, when we wanna talk about, because I think it's also really great, we can talk about what doesn't happen, but when things do happen, um, I think it's also a great learning story. But I think it's also really great when funders actually sit down and have these conversations with community members where you can say, here are the people who are quote unquote, working with us. Here's a conversation you can have with them. Um, you know, if we have to find somebody who's an independent translator very often because languages, but that very often tells a really powerful story. And I think those have been the places where we've seen, and interestingly enough, we didn't, we didn't continue the funding on that particular project, but we have a wonderful relationship with that funder, um, just because they were able to afford the listening to the community, to be able to also see how impact was happening. They would be able to tell the story to other people about how, again, um, we might decide how impact looks so that they were also empowered to also now begin to work with their partners, their board members, et cetera, to be able to say, how can we really rethink and, and decolonize things differently? That's beautiful. Karima, I think we're running out of time, but um, there is someone in the audience. I think Brett, Brett Sinclair was, uh, had his hand raised. So let's just take one more question from you folks and, um, and see who can answer. I don't know, Brett, if you can hear me and if you can unmute yourself. Hi, yes, thank you. Uh, a, a curious question i'm supporting the the creation of a diversity equity, inclusion community action network uh here in in the states and something that was unique to how this group started off was that this was an idea that originally came out of a conversation with two of our large regional funders that are saying that this is work that really needs to happen here um but a year later and about 90,000 of in-kind work, there's still been no one being put on the table by these partners who called for this to happen. Do you have any thoughts and suggestions on any ways of moving, moving forward or? And is it, Brett, to put it into context, um, is it more around how do we, how do we convince funders that decolonizing practices of funding and um, making more diverse and more inclusive fundings and more equitable fundings. How, how, do we, how do we do that? What is the cell? What is the carrot that we put in front of funders? Is that a little bit a framing of your question? More in this case, how to get the funders whose idea for this network it originally was to actually invest in that project themselves. Okay. Thank you, Brett. Because this is our last question is probably our last couple of minutes. Um, I invite our speakers to either answer Brett uh, with some advice or if you want to share some last thoughts. Just in the spirit of time, uh, I mean, that's, that's a big question, Brett, but my sense is I think there, it feels like there are two really critical things for me showing the story of change comes to mind. So showing the story of change and sharing the evidence, I think is really important from a funder's perspective. Thank you, Ross. Anything else from Mary, Melissa, Karima before we start closing? I think there's a piece there about funder education. <clears throat> So Brad, what comes to mind immediately is the, yeah, showing the outcome of it, but also really demonstrating what it takes, because there might be really good intention on the side of the funder, but maybe not a good understanding of what does that whole journey entail in terms of resources and time. So walking the funder through that. I would just add also finding other ways that funders can participate in things, because I think sometimes the conversation is about funders funding things, but what we found is that funders can talk to other people, they can help enable you, they can find other ways to support you, and I think that those are the kind of broader relationships you also want to determine. 
So, you know, whoever's initial idea was it, if they have an understanding of it, maybe they can talk to other people who might be able to fund this or may be able to do a little part of it. So how do you engage them as partners first, as opposed to engaging them strictly as, hey, can you come and foot the bill? And I'm not saying that's what you're doing, Brett, but just, just as a shift. I agree, and I'll, I'll just, um, I agree with everything that everybody said. And also my experience is that if you um, ask for advice, often you get advice and some funding. And so that, um, that would be another piece of a little, little piece of wisdom that I'd offer. Thank you. Thank you again so much to the four of you and Ross, if you wanna close us down and sorry for delaying, this was a great conversation. Yeah, so um, we had planned more time for this conversation. I'm also getting the sense if this group of folks had talked for an hour, I still wouldn't feel like I heard enough from them. So who knows, maybe more in the future. Um, we'll see. And um, we want to share, we're going to send a follow up to everyone who registered. In that will be some additional learning resources uh, around funding systems change. And that includes uh, courses that are available, learning experiences, as well as reports and networks that are available. And I think um, Someone from an act might be sharing a bit in the chat here too. I think Yusra already shared some other things related to other ENACT events. This is the last week, so take advantage. And um, we'll just hang on here for a bit as we close so that you can grab links as you want from there. We'll also send these in the follow-up email to everyone. So let's unmute, please. And let's give one another a human goodbye, whatever that is for you, something. <laughs> that you want to say to the group as we depart. Adios. Thank you.